What's up, what's up? Welcome back. Today we are working on my Git GUI. His name is Spit. Um, and here he is, right? So this is basically like a glorified Git log. Um, and his purpose is, um, I tried a lot of Git GUIs over time and found myself continually falling back on just going back to the command line and even like viewing diffs in the command line um, because of like some of the properties of Git's diff tool. Like I kind of ended up liking it better than any GUI tools, um, but I think that that's stupid. Um, I shouldn't feel that way. And so I started making my own Git GUI that had properties that specifically I want, right? Um, which means that it might not be the best generic Git GUI, but it's the best one for me. Um, and so where we're at right now is you have like this log view, you click on commits, it'll calculate their diffs and show you like the commit message in here, as well as, uh, as of yesterday, we can like kind of show like stage modified and untracked files in like this, like staging area, whatever. Um, and we added this like staging area and what ended up happening when I tried using this in practice is there are sometimes very, very large files in untracked and calculating diffs for these untracked files ends up uh, triggering this like really shitty case in our diff algorithm uh, that basically makes it take up like an extreme amount of memory. Like if you take the number of lines in the untracked file, uh, it's a essentially like number of lines squared memory used approximately somewhere in that order of magnitude. Um, and so what happens is if there's like you know, a core dumped or in the, like a core dumped because I ran the application and then that becomes like a gig. All of a sudden that explodes into like, like, you know, sometimes I've seen like a 360 gig attempted allocation and that like crashes my program, whatever. Um, and so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to look at limiting the memory usage of the diff algorithm. So basically like make it like actually failable, right? Cause right now we kind of assume that memory allocations can't happen or can't fail. And then when they do they crash the program. So we need to like propagate these failures to the UI in some way. So that like, you know, maybe I see a file in here that says like, oops, diff failed to generate. That's the plan for today. Um, there are like, there are ways to like mitigate this. Uh, there are ways to like mitigate the failure cases. Like you can go from N squared into like linear space. Um, but I haven't implemented that yet. So we're going to start by reducing the consequences of the failure and then uh, maybe at some point loop back on the linear improvement if we find that we're failing on too many things. Yeah, so that's the plan for today. Um, so the plan is approximately, uh, we're going to look at like adding a memory cap to the algorithm. So you just say like when you call the library, hey, diff this, but don't use more than like 10 megabytes of memory. Um, and then that will change the API to have some sort of like failure mode. We're gonna have to propagate that failure and then find a way to like shove it into the diff view. And then we'll have to integrate that like the new version of the library with the Git GUI. And then if we get through all of that like too quickly, we can look at maybe trying to like stage allocations so that at the very least, we're not uh, always trying to allocate for the worst case. Um, yeah, so that's where that's the plan. Uh, can this be compiled for Mac Metal? I don't know. I've never tried. Um, I have a friend who did try using this on Windows, and he said that it worked, and that surprised me. So there's a chance that it'll work on Mac. There, it, like, everything's kind of using libraries that abstract away the platform, so might work. Uh, if it doesn't work, that's too bad. <laughs> but you could try it if you're, if you're interested. Uh, okay. So let's pop open our little like spiff. Okay, so there's spit, which is the Spheraphoria's Git GUI, and then there's spiff, which is Spheraphoria's diff tool. Um, so spit. So so let's let's see. There's like uh, if I say git diff tool, which is like a custom alias from like this commit to this one. This will open up this like spiff. Widget, which is very, very similar, like almost exactly the same as what you see in the Git GUI, except it's like a standalone diff tool. Um, so this standalone diff tool is like is packaged as a widget that can be consumed from the Git GUI as well. So I think that we first will probably try to like fix the the problem in the spiff diff tool, and then we can propagate that to like this the 
the go get GUI. Uh, for the rendering, is it using Vulkan? If it doesn't work, I could make it work. Um, I think it's using OpenGL. Uh, it's using this library like eGUI for, for display, and he abstracts away that stuff for me. So I'm pretty sure it's OpenGL, and I'm pretty sure OpenGL should work on all platforms. Um, there are, like, other things that might cause problems. Like, we kind of call the git command line directly. I don't know if that's going to be an issue. There's file watches, which I think is, like, using some Darwin abstraction, but I'm not 100% sure on that either. Um, yeah, so you'd, you'd have to try it. You'd have to try it. Uh, okay. So let's go into spiff. And the root of this problem is from, uh, or sorry, not the root of the problem. The entry point, we should say, is this function diff. Very simple. Um, I guess in order to like understand what the fuck is happening here, we should probably look at like what the fuck the Myers diff algorithm is a little bit. Um, so the idea uh, is basically, uh, this this blog post, by the way, is like fucking sick. I spent so much time when I was implementing the first time reading through this, this guy's diff algorithm blog. And it's he's basically kind of like rephrasing this paper uh, the original paper from Myers, but in a way that's, like, more consumable. Uh, but the idea is that if you go from, like, a, a sequence A, B, C, A, B, B, A, and you want to get to C, B, A, B, A, C, you can represent uh, the, like, path to go from one of these to the other by a series, like, a grid here. Uh, and so the idea is that on this grid, you represent deletions by moving to the right and additions by moving down. And if they're like sequences that are the same, they like are a diagonal. So here, if I'm trying to go from A, B, C, A, B, B, A to C, B, A, B, A, C, I would like delete A, delete B. Then we see like, oh, this is C here and a C here. So we can go like, that's a diagonal. There's These are the same. So we move down the diagonal and we go like, okay, so the next thing in the first sequence is A, the next thing in the new sequence is B. So we'll like put the B in there and then we have like A, B, here and a b here so we'll traverse yeah so it's like right delete delete traverse add delete traverse traverse delete traverse add that's how like this kind of works and like the way the algorithm works is that uh if you represent the problem like this you can kind of use some like nice mathematical properties of this setup to kind of squash down uh make like a representation of this thing that makes the traversals free um, so you end up kind of with like, you're, st you only have to store, um, how do I say this? You only have to store like each horizontal or vertical transition. So like this diagonal section, they kind of like mark those as free. And then you do this like BFS search of, uh, of nodes where you're greedily moving down the diagonal. Hard to explain. Oh, it's not really that important. Um, so, but basically, like, what ends up happening is you get this, like, this algorithm here, and we basically copy-pasted this algorithm into our Rust code, um, and the trick is you have to store each, like, a snapshot of each layer of the algorithm. So, we have, like, this, like, tree structure here, or not a tree, like, a triangle, I guess, here, where we say, like, okay, this is the first step of the algorithm, second step, third step, fourth step, fifth step, and at each step, you're, like, storing kind of, like, indexes that you were walked through here and then to figure out how like you use this to figure out what the like the shortest edit sequence is to see like okay so these are the number of changes i have to make um and then you just like walk backwards to this tree so as you get like more and more steps of insertions and deletions this like tree grows 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 and becomes like more and more expensive um so what we do here is we like allocate kind of like the worst case up front which is wrong we don't have to do that because the worst case is actually not the common case we should probably allocate for the common case and then expand later uh, but we haven't implemented that yet um but we can kind of like limit the like we we should limit the size of this thing initially so we can say like max memory is going to be maybe max mem bytes we'll call it is going to be some amount of memory that we're saying we will not ever allocate more than this uh, and here we like calculate the size that we're going to need. And so here we can say like, if num slots is greater than max mem bytes, and it's not actually num slots because number, the data is I 64s in here. We'll say if a uh, num slots time stood mem size of val, uh, I guess we'll call it size of I 64 is greater than max mem bytes. 
then here we will say, uh, we'll return an error. And I guess for now, the error doesn't have to say anything of value. He can just say error. Because there's only one way this can fail. Uh-huh. So this guy will say, I succeeded. And then we just have to propagate this everywhere. Uh, so here, when we construct this like trace, we have to say this can fail. Mm-hmm. Yep. And maybe we'll even, maybe we will give this failure a name. Seems reasonable. So we'll say pubstruct, um, let's see, uh, not enough, or let's, what do we call this? To, uh, requires not enough memory. No, it's not that we don't have enough. It's like that we've gone over the limit. Over memory limit error. And we'll implement some like error traits for him later, but I'll for now. Over memory limit error. For now, we'll just use the type like this, and we can give him some of the prettiness that he needs later. Uh, so this guy's going to say over memory limit error is the only reason he could fail. And so then we can throw a little question mark on this guy. And I guess here we have to provide maximum memory as well. Max memory bytes is a U size. We pass him in here. Boom. Okay. Uh, so now anyone who returns needs to say, I am okay. I succeeded. And probably down here, we also have to say, I succeeded. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. So somebody is calling this function. Uh, so where is this? Split insertion rule pair. Oh, right. So there's like move tracking and stuff in here. So I guess these guys, we're just going to say everywhere, we're going to like propagate this max memory bytes thing. We'll just propagate, 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 propagate. Uh, this guy now is a failable thing. Uh, so he is going to say, memory, what do we call it? Memory over memory limit error. Yep. Which means that now when we call the diff, we have to hit a little question mark. And our return has to say, okay. Uh, this guy now needs, you know, more result propagation. Results over memory limit error. Myers-Briggs personality difference algorithm. Certainly it's not the same guy. But that is funny. I don't I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> uh Okay, so somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. He doesn't like this result. Oh, because we forgot uh max mem bytes needs to be in here as well. Max mem bytes over here. Memory bytes, I guess is what we called it before. Max memory. Uh, so this is kind of boring, actually. I should have done, maybe it would have been made more sense to do this stuff off stream, but it's too late now. Uh, does it at least compile without tests? No. It would be nice if I could limit these, like, I, I can fix the test later. So I guess I'll just scroll through these and skip anything related to test. Here we go. Okay, error function takes two arguments or three arguments, two are supplied. So diff collection processor, what is this guy? He is calculating diffs based off of some data. And so I guess when we, either when we recompute the diffs, we need to pass in the maximum memory, or when we construct this guy, we can say, please never use more than this much memory. Um, And I guess it depends on how this is used. So who calls this guy? Recompute diffs. Process new options comes from our GUI has some thread, and when he gets events, he processes some options. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna say that it makes more sense, I think, to do this on construction. I'm just gonna throw it as here max memory bytes, which I'm not really 100% sure on, but it's fine. We can always change our minds later. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is permanent. 
And so over here, when we call the diff algorithm, we have to say, this is my maximum memory that I am willing to use. And then this guy is failable now, so he needs to return a result of uh, nothing or over memory limit error, okay. Cannot find type over memory limit error, so I probably have to use libdiff over memory limit error, all right. And this guy at the end has to say, okay, I succeeded. And here we go, once again, we have to provide the maximum memory and I guess fail if we cannot do what needs to be done. I guess we also have to think about uh, what happens if these things fail. Are we like adjust, like fucking up our internal state by returning early in that case? Uh, we should look at that. So what does this guy do? He says, I'm going to clear my existing diffs. And then I'm going to look at... What is like what is this guy doing? He's looking at a single a single set a single set of two files, I think. It looks like this is like the number the line the content of the lines in file A, the content of the lines in file B. We trim them maybe and then we like create the sequence of disks for this file. So probably in the case where we fail, maybe just like propagating error doesn't make sense necessarily uh because what we do here is we clear the initial diffs first which is sketchy because now if we fail um we don't get new diffs which arguably arguably if you failed before you're not gonna fail you're, you're not gonna fail after because like before and after you're gonna have like the same amount of memory usage required um, but maybe it makes more sense to To like flag failure in some way internally because someone is going to it looks like it looks like someone asks to recompute the diffs and then they do something else probably what is happening here so when we process new options in our diff thread what are we doing we say hey we have like a request processor and could you, we, somebody has asked us to reprocess the diffs. Uh-huh. So here are the new options. And then we generate. Aha. We like turn. So what happens in generate? We look at. What the fuck is this? Process diff collection. Process diffs. Uh, okay. So when we recompute, this does like the actual like calculation and then the generation like takes that calculated thing and why is it like this i guess exports it into some format so he's not actually doing any work here and so like i guess with the way this is set up this generate function should expose some like diff who says hey this is the label of this guy so this is like his file name i guess here is, oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, um, how do I show this? So here, uh, what we are showing is like a processed diff is actually just like, this is just one big string, it looks like. So, so we're taking like, we have like internally, we've stored like, these are the sequences that we need to get from A to B. And then we turn them into a string based off of like these options. So if I say like, hey, I only want to look at like the things that were removed. We don't render the things that were added. If we say, I only want to render the things that are added. We don't render the things that were removed. And, you know, you know, otherwise we say, give me both. And here he like, oh, I see. So he creates like a string, a string that we're rendering in a text view. And then here he says, okay, now can we color those strings according to these, like, indexes of them? I see. Okay. So what he needs to do is, in this generation of data, he probably has to say, hey, we, ha we have these purposes of things that we're showing. And now another thing that we can show is, like, a failure. And then all we need to do 
is when we generate the the when we like serialize the diff, we can uh, check if the existing diff failed. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. And then we can like prop we can like we can show that as a failure later. But let's like get to the point where we compile first. So we're gonna kind of say that um, for now. Uh, we have to say like flag failure, and we'll just say that these this is like where the the propagation of the error stops. This cannot fail, and instead we just need to do something different in the case that we fail here. So we'll say again here, uh, fix me flag failure, and I haven't decided how we're going to do that yet, but we will. Yes, 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 okay, this makes sense, this makes sense. Boom. Okay. Uh, and so this unwrap thing is going to cause problems because he's going to try to render the error in some way, so we have to go to uh, wherever we defined that error type and at least derive debug. Okay. And we're close, so... Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Cargo check. So now some when we construct this guy we need to say our max memory size. So we can go to spiff GUI RS, who's gonna create this guy, and we can just say for now we're gonna set like a really low limit to like flag the to force the failure case to happen. So we can do something like uh what like a hundred bytes? That's pretty fucking small. And cargo check. And I think I think there's another case for this. We construct this guy in two places, like a command line version and a uh, GUI version. So if we go to uh, if you if I run like spiff, yeah, let's see if there's an example. Um, let's do spiff cargo toml and spiff cargo toml. So this is like the same thing. Oh, that looks bugged by the way. There's like some line numbers not being rendered here. But this is supposed to be uh, the command line version of spiff GUI which shows it here. Uh, just because I wanted uh, how do I say this? I wanted to have two UIs to kind of like force uh, the correct abstraction, as well as uh, to be able to benchmark more easily. Uh, okay, so cargo check. We build now, so we now are like have a memory limit. Maybe it would be nicer if we pass the memory limit on the command line, uh, but for now we're not going to deal with that. Eventually we will, though. Okay, so now if I cargo run this guy, uh, we can run him on like this cargo toml and source... Cargo, toml, and we have to say which binary we want to run. So we do see failed to render diff. This is for the wrong reason. The car source cargo toml does not exist. Oops. Spiff cargo toml. There we go. Okay. So now we are cra crashing immediately because we're over the memory limit, which is really good. That's a good sign. Um, so, all we have to do now is find a way to flag that to the rest of the system. Okay, so, I guess what makes sense is everywhere where we're calling this, like, diff, what are we doing? We're pushing that diff to our list of diffs. Oh, so this isn't for a single file. This is for many files. Is it? Oh, yes. Ah, it is. It's for many files because this is a vector for each diff. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. So here for each file, if we go over the limit, we will we should push into this like list of diffs that we're editing. 
we we should say this thing might fail, right? So uh, we can have something like something like pub enum store diff. I don't know if this should be public. Maybe it's private for now. We'll see. And uh, we can say success diff. I guess we don't really need to make a new enum. We can just reuse the result. So maybe this guy's going to be result this and uh, mem out over memory limit error. And so now these guys don't have to be unwrapped. Okay. Then we say, hey, if we are tracking moves, we do this like matching stuff and it looks like we take the existing diffs and we we replace them with new ones, okay? So this, I guess, is the same to some extent. These types are a little bit wrong. So match insertions removals, he's going to return match result to match diffs over memory limiter, okay? And so I guess... Um, matches. Like, what is going on here? What is going on here? We're taking diffs for all files. So this is like, okay, vec new, I guess. We're taking matches for all files. Every file has some diffs. Yeah, you know what? I don't understand yet, so <laughs> instead let's try to make some sort of like incremental progress and say unimplemented. We'll come back for this once I have a better handle on what's happening. Uh, when we serialize these diffs in some way, single diff processor inputs is now going to be taking in What? This is a set of diffs for a single file, I guess. Which means that this guy is going to be a result out of uh, over memory limit, I guess. And does that line up with the types that we're passing in? It looks like it does. And so when we interact with him now, we have to... Jesus Christ, what are all these type? Okay, so we take some inputs to this, like, single diff processor, and we turn it into this, like, shit show. Holy, that's a lot of crap. Holy shit. Uh, but this is going to be the same, where this is going to be result and over memory limit error, okay. And now, when we process the diff to construct what is, what looks like a thing uh yeah 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 string and display info line numbers uh i guess here we could try uh these things previously were okay what is this self diffs is a result thing okay so we can say match self diffs yes or uh let's okay diffs Yes, is equal to self diffs, else, and then we'll have to do the, like, handle this error case. But then here, the rest of this should be fine if we... Um... Oh, Jesus. Whoa, oh, that's a lot of code. Oh, that's a lot of code. I see. Um... Yauchi, yauchi. Yauchi, yauchi, yauchi. Okay, so this guy is basically kind of like piece by piece rendering the diff, I guess, is what we did here. So we have this like... Oi, 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 okay. So we, we start by... And everything takes in self by mutable reference, I see. 
So he's kind of like a state machine that like chugs on forwards depending on what the next thing to do is. And so it's almost like we just want to like bail out of everything in the case where it failed. It's almost like we want to skip this entire path even. Because what do we Pro, when we we generate this like processed diff data as well as like a vec u size, what is this vec u size for? Who calls this guy? Search results. Ah, I see. So he also looks at the search query and decides where to jump to. Whoo, rough. Okay. Yeah. So I think maybe what we do is we we just skip this whole section if we failed. So, diffs, push data, process, lines, eight. yeah, yeah, so we go self diffs here is a vector of results, and so here we have to unwrap the results, I think, is going to be what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So this guy is going to stay the way he was, and he's only going to be called in the case of success, and here we just have to say, uh, let diffs is equal to self diffs else something uh-huh uh-huh okay why is this uh because this needs to be like a block maybe okay i guess this is probably gonna be a match is going to fit more clean here. So if it's okay, we do what we were doing before, which is this guy. Uh-huh. But this guy takes in this new thing now. And if it's an error, maybe we we have to figure out how to like make the same API. So this is going to return. I guess the search results are always going to be. I think the search results are always going to be empty. And the process diff data, we're just gonna have to make one of these guys. So let's just figure out what goes in here. Um, process diff data. He's going to be something. We're going to put him in here. And the label, it looks like, is just going to be self labels i. That's easy. Like it is up here. The process diff, I guess we will render the error. So maybe we'll just say a format failed to generate diff. Maybe we'll just say that's a string for now. And maybe we'll even say why. Like this. Uh-huh. I don't know what line numbers is, but I guess for now we'll make it empty. I think it's like on the left side of the diff, we show the line numbers, and we can just not do that, I think. And... Here we're going to have to make a display info. So we're going to need to have a range in the data. I see. So we're going to say let, let processed string is equal to this. And we'll say let display info is equal to a vector which has some range, which is going to be 0 to the length of the string. And the segment purpose is going to be failed, which doesn't exist yet. But that means that here we can just say display info, and the num inserted lines, zero, num remove line, num move, num zero. We'll just put zero on all of these. And I'm pretty sure that that's fine. Pretty sure. I guess we'll find out real soon. So this guy, we're going to say failed. And 
he doesn't like that this is not in a parentheses. And what does he like now? This expression has this type. What is he complaining about? Holy! Uh, we fucked up big time. Expected calm after the following match arm. Okay. A little calm here. And... Uh... Cargo check. I need I need more context on these errors. So this expression has he's a vector of results of vector of div actions, and we found oh fuck me. Okay, so this needs to be am I high? Uh, oh, this diffs needs to be self diffs i, like this. Aha, yes, 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 yes. And then... Found vec diff action instead of vec diff action. What the fuck? Am I high? Self diffs is... A bunch of diff actions, yes. And this is expecting a bunch of diff act. What am I missing? I'm fucking high. What did I do? What did I change? What would did this look before? Uh, I must not understand. I must not understand. Diffs. So this is a... Takes diff matches files and options and generates a diff view file data for a single file pair. Right. So why is this, why is this a vector of vectors? Diff index. Oh, fuck me. Diff idx. So he actually takes the whole collection instead of just the guy he cares about, which is silly. Why does he do it that way? Do Does he need to do it that way? Diff index matches get blah, blah, blah. Because that makes my life a lot harder. But maybe not that much harder. Maybe this is manageable. So if we just kind of ignore the fact that that might be silly, uh, we can maybe just transform the thing into the thing another thing. So let's see. Uh, so we have diffs is equal to diffs iter map value to oh Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, this is a pain in my ass. Massive pain in my ass. Uh, so, instead, we need to look at self-diffs as an iterator. Oi, 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 oi. Let, let unwrap diffs, no, fuck me, man. Ma okay, so I think this makes sense. We match self diff i. And here we kind of ignore the content of him, I guess. And instead we actually say, let processor diffs is equal to self diffs iter map each thing Oh my god. That's so annoying. Why is the API like this? Why did I curse previous me? Okay, so this guy for some reason is looking at he's only care he's only trying to generate for a single file. Yet he is 
keeping track of all of the things for all files, which is just a silly thing for him to be doing. So it's almost like we should say diffs. I think that we just change this API and we'll just kind of see how that falls over. So this guy should now just be a reference to some diff actions. Uh-huh, like this. And he's going to complain a lot. But I think we can just delete anywhere where he uses this guy. Yep. Yeah, no problem there. So I don't know why I did it that way in the first place. Confusing. But that solves my problem. Okay, moving on, moving on. Uh, for now, we'll say, we'll render this thing as debug. Here we say process string. Uh, here we need to put an ampersand, I think. Yep. Consider removing the borrow. Why does that work here, but not down here? Oh, because probably this has to be like cloned or something. Sure, it's fine. That's fine. Cargo check. Do we compile? We're close. Um, people aren't handling the segment purpose of failed, so we can look at a uh, spiff widget and segment purpose. Here we say failed. And I guess we'll make it red if we fail. Uh huh. Cool. And I think there was another one in uh, spiff lib at line 60, it said. Oh, that's just where it's defined. Uh, spiff r at line 39. Ah, okay. Ah, so this is the same thing where we need to make it red if we failed. So if it's failed, we say, please be red. All right. That compiles, and if we cargo run now, I wonder if that works. It might. Uh, no. There is some um, not implemented at spiff lib rs line 166. What do we not do? Unimplemented. Ah, right. We didn't handle the move tracking stuff. Uh. So what do we want to do here? I guess for each file... For each file file we can't track moves if we couldn't generate the diff for it but moves are like tracked across file boundaries right things might be moved from one file to another so i guess it makes sense to kind of just null out that diff for the one that failed and then it won't look like it moved maybe we just disable move tracking if any of them failed because we can't reliably track the moves if we don't know what happened. I think that's... Is there like some easy way to like flag that to the user? Maybe not, but maybe that's okay. Okay, um, so I guess we'll say if self diffs iter any, if any of these guys is an error, has error, uh, any, let any diff error, equal to this. And, and if there is any error, what do we do? I guess we can just like hard disable track moves. I don't know if that's like something that will get flagged back to the UI though. So maybe we'll just say uh, if self track track moves, moves and I guess we'll say none here. And then we can say uh, all diffs generated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, no method name none, so we should do the inverse it's all, probably, and uh, is okay, like this. Uh, if and else have incompatible types, so here... Uh, 
Ah, oh, fuck, this can fail too. Oh my, what a pain in my ass. And also, why does it think they're incompatible types? Like, shouldn't this still... Shouldn't this still work? Expected vec, vec, dick faction, found vec result, diff, oh. Mm, not seen it. Oh, because this diffs? Mm. Okay, hold on. Unimplemented. Let's just start here. That's fine. Oh, what a pain in the ass, man! So, this guy's expecting vector of results. Ah, okay. So this guy acts like his matched diffs. Ah, here we go. So I guess here we can fail as well. Ah, yes. Out, uh, over memory limit error. Uh-huh. Which means that in this guy, we don't return early. Necessarily. Um, so he gets in vector of, I guess this is going to be result. Over memory limit error. I guess. These are the diffs. And so, for each... No, fuck this, man. Fuck this. This isn't what I want to do at all. This is not what I want to do. This is not what I want. Okay, so here, we want to uh, take the diffs and map them into what the types were before. Diffs into iter map v v unwrap Yes, collect. And this is going to be a vector of vector of diff action. Okay, does that compile at the very least? If we just say, take this and unimplement it. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So now we should be able to, at the very least, call this function like it was called before. And that shouldn't fail either. Perfect. Okay. And then... And then, if we get through all that, if we get through all of that, we need to handle, like, a failure on these. So let's, for now, we'll take away this unwrap here and move it down here. Let matched diffs is equal to match diffs unwrap. And we have to figure out what to do with this. I don't know yet. Um, and then we say let diffs is equal to match diffs diffs and we have to put them back into like the type that has potential failures uh so we used to say map v okay v collect okay yes and then here we can say diffs and match diffs matches Ooh, i think and here we can just write okay i guess nice Okay, okay, we're a lot closer. So now if we, uh, we have to handle failure here, but for now let's just like put a big ass number in here. So we'll, we'll disable the limit on insertion, like move tracking. And then hopefully we can compile this and at least see some form of progress. I wanna see something here. Very nice. Very nice. So here we say fail to generate diff over memory limit error. Now it would be nice to see this failure kind of like represented in this like overview here. Specifically like this zero is kind of wrong here. Like the number of insertions and removals maybe should be flagged as a failure as well. So that in this view you can see like Usually this shows like pluses and minuses, but maybe we should write like question marks here. Um, but I, I think I'll put a fix me here and say, uh, 
uh, insertion removal may be unknown. But we're close. That's that's a lot. We're at least we at least like have something that indicates the failure. So we're on the right track. On the right track. Hello, hello. Do you use the plugins for Tmux? I'm using the bottom bar as Tmux. Uh, I don't. I think so. What do we have in here? Tmux plugins. Why is it like fucking bright ass green? Uh, I think that Tmux Yank I actually disabled. TPM is like a plugin manager. I add one theme and then set sensible defaults. Rust. I see Rust. I like Rust. <laughs> one of many. One of many. Uh, okay. So let's look at these unwraps here. So let's go back to putting in... Here, self-max memory bytes. And how, how should we handle failure to generate matches? I guess if they fail, we just say that there are no matches. That seems reasonable to me. Uh, but it means that on failure here... So this guy, like, what he was doing before was he's kind of like... How do I, how do I explain this? How do I explain this? Okay, so let's look for some example where we see moves of stuff here. There's a little bit in that one, but I'd like to see more. Uh, no blue in most... Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, so here's an example of some diff where we took a bunch of code and we moved it from one file to another, right? It all used to be in this, like, spiff GUI file and then we moved a bunch of it to widget. So what we see is, like, a bunch of, like, orange stuff here and I've, if I hover over this, it says, I moved this section from widget RS or into widget RS. Great. Um, so... The way this works is we generate one diff between the two files. And then to find the moves, we actually diff the diffs with each other. And if we find like the, we look at like the insertion diff and the removal diff. Um, and we say, hey, if you guys have like a segment that's the same, we're going to color that a certain way. Um, and so what that means is like you might have one giant diff that gets split into several smaller diffs. Um, because you might have like a subset of the large diff that got matched. Um, and so this API for this function, he consumes the input diffs and like might adjust them in some way and then return them, which is fine. Except now in our error case, we have to return the, we, like if we fail, we have to return the original thing back. We can't like consume him completely. Or maybe we can't. Maybe that's actually better behavior. If we fail to generate matches, we can make, we can say, we can flag to the caller. Uh, we can say, we fucked up. We can't generate move to track. We can't track moves. And then the user could uncheck check the track moves button. And then see the diff that way. That I think that's like pretty good, reasonable user experience, actually. Nice. Okay. Since your about me has let underscore, I want to know what your was your lang prior to Rust. My about me has let underscore. Maybe you're not talking to me. Are you talking to me? I don't know. Uh, your about me has nothing. Yeah, that's that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh, basically on handle result. <laughs> I see. I see. Uh, that makes sense. I see you're making a little Rust joke. Uh, what was my line prior to Rust? Mostly C++. Mostly C++. Some C, some C++. Some Python. But yeah, I think my... my the, the Rust uh, pipeline, I think, is like... I consider it like C++, but newer. Right, where it's definitely not C, but newer. People who really like C are not going to like Rust. But people who like C++, in some 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 section of people who like C++ are going to really like Rust. And I think I fall into that category. Um. Okay, so if we fail, our diffs match matched diffs, and if we succeeded. 
we do what we did before, and that was we take this stuff and we return it. V diffs, V matches. Yep. And if we fail, uh, for now, we will just say that all of our diffs are failures. They all suck. So diffs are going to be like uh, we need a bunch of them. We need the right number of diffs, I guess. So we need to remember that. And we'll just say all of them are dead. So I guess we'll say let num diffs here is equal to self diffs len. Uh-huh. And here we are going to say zero to num diffs and turn those into uh, error over memory limit error for now. Uh-huh, and the matches are just going to be an empty vector. I think that should be okay. Okay, we're close. Close, 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 close. Uh, this should not be a vector, this needs to be a hash map. Okay. That's pretty reasonable. So probably this over memory limit error now needs to kind of flag its like purpose. Like where did we did we fail to generate in like the diff section or did we fail to generate in the line matching section? Um so maybe maybe this should be an but that's fine. For now, for now, we will, mm, or we could say, uh, we could like just put the purpose as a string, and that'll make our lives way easier. So here we could say uh, allocate, allocate trace data, or allocate trace storage, and then here we can say uh, match insertions. Uh, no, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right at all. It does not feel right. It should be more like, uh, this guy should be renamed to, like, uh, I guess we can fail from multiple contexts. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. I think, I think, I think I'm getting there. So we're gonna make an enum of failure types here. Uh, so we're gonna say diff generation failure error maybe and here we'll say generate diffs who is caused by an over memory limit error and then we also have um generate matches yes okay yes 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 and so now all our our diff storage in this guy is not going to have over memory limit error he's going to have diff generation error aha yes 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 and so now now we can say we map this error to a uh, diff generation error, uh, and it was something like matches. What do we call it? We called it generate matches. Yep. Uh huh. And we need to derive debug on this guy. Wouldn't it make more sense to have a single vec? Isn't vec itself costly? Yeah, probably. Uh, I think there's probably a reason I did it that way before. I think, uh, so, how do we say it? How do I say this? Uh, vector of vector is shit, right? It causes memory fragmentation. Um, you have, like, pointers to pointers. It's not that great. But, I mean, in the context of what we're doing... Probably the CPU hit on generating the diffs is like where all of the expense comes from. And so if a vector of vector to store some of this stuff uh, feels okay, which I don't know if it does. I haven't, this has been like a year since I've worked on this, right? I'm, I'm not sure if I agree with like previous decisions. But if at if creating a vector of vector feels good enough, um, 
in the case where it's like not a very expensive area of the code, then I think it's fine to do that, right? Like you don't like there's there's cases where the memory fragmentation is going to cause like major noticeable slowdowns, but I don't know if this is that case. So this is one of those things where it's like just do the stupid thing first and optimize later if it becomes a problem. Was probably my strategy. We'll find out once this thing is runnable. Yeah, we are in some hell category right now. So 169, we are in some problematic area. Okay, so here we need to map the error to diff generation error generate diffs. Uh-huh. Yep. Cargo check. Um and this collect statement in Ah, uh, this is a not correct, correct. This should be over memory limit like this, I guess, or I guess it's E. Yes, 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 yes. This makes more sense. Perfect. Captured out of variable. So do I move E clone maybe? And this error now has to be clonable, probably, which is a pain in my ass. Pain in my ass, but it's fine. It's the zero size type, so maybe it should just even be copy and clone, because it's literally no no it's literally nothing. So then this should be copyable. Everybody's happy. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happy? Everyone's happy! Alright, okay. So now if I run this guy. We should see fail to generate diff because we failed to generate diffs. This is going to have to turn into a nicer message later, but that's fine. Um, and then what we could do is we could try um, allowing expensive diff generation, but not allow uh, move tracking. And so here we can see that, fuck, that's not working. Maybe the track move stuff requires like way too little memory. So we'll just say we'll put like one here just to like try to force the failure case on that half of the code. I want to see that we like can hit the case where move tracking is causing breakages and we're not fucking hitting that. Why? I wonder if it's like depends on the type of the. Uh, Okay, so how does how can this even fucking fail? How can this fail? So somewhere in this match insertion removals, he is got a question mark. It's when we split. Oh, it's only on splitting. I see. So we actually have to have a file uh, like a diff that has some moves in it. Okay. So we just have to find, um, I guess what we can do, here's what we'll do, here's what we'll do. We'll make a cargo lock two. And in this, we're just gonna like kind of blindly delete some shit and put it at the bottom of the file. So now if I run a spiff on cargo lock and cargo lock two, uh, spiff GUI, we should see, uh, oh, that's funny. Uh, it actually considered, like, most of the file a move, and then there's, like, that one chunk. Uh, let's, maybe, can we, like... Uh, we need to do some more rearranging, probably. Just to, like, exacerbate the moves a little bit. That's no, fine, whatever. That's probably good enough. So now if we diff cargo lock and cargo lock two, hopefully we should see a failure to generate only when, oh, generate diffs is failing because it's all, it's probably, oh, because I re, I went back to max memory bytes here. So let's put these back to what is essentially unlimited. Use as much memory as you want, please. Okay, so this is generate matches fails, and so we untick this, it works again. Okay, I think that's pretty pretty decent. 
That works pretty good. That's like what I would expect. Okay. So I guess now uh, what we should do is we should make some nicer error messages for these guys. So here we can uh, impl format display for diff generation error. Uh, no format. Oh, yeah, we have format. Okay, so we slap this guy here, and I guess we match diff uh, self. And we can uh, use diff generation error star here, place this with E, E. And here we're going to say uh, failed to generate diffs because of E. And the same here, but generate matches due to E. E doesn't uh ge doesn't derive or implement the display, so we have to go back here and we'll just say uh impl format display for over memory of error. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh no format, so use the format. What about error trait? Shouldn't that be implemented too? Uh if we were using it as the error trait, but I think that we were, were not hitting any case where that is relevant yet. And since this isn't getting exposed externally, then it's probably not, like, a problem. Like, yes, technically, like, it should, you could, errors should be errors, but, um, also, like, if we're not using them as errors, why does it matter? You know what I mean? Like, we, like, the, it's, it's only making it to a certain area. Um, Matt, uh, so here we're just gonna say, right, F, uh, over memory limit. And maybe we should even say how much memory was required. So here we could say like required. Required is going to be a U size and a maximum is a U size. And then in here we can say required memory allocation uh, algorithm required this many bytes. Um, which is over the maximum of this many. Yes, required a maximum. Boom. Chillin'. And so now when we construct this guy, we actually have to say this was what we tried to allocate. So we'll say uh, required was let required mem bytes is equal to this shit. Boom, 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 boom. Yep, yep. And so we can say required and uh, maximum is max mem bytes. Okay. And then we have to put a little semicolon here. Required not in scope. So this is uh, required is required mem bytes like this. Okay. And algorithm required, uh, we'll say bytes, which is over maximum bytes. There we go. All right. All right, all right, all right. Hard to run. All right. Fail to generate diffs. And this is being rendered as debug, so wherever we are saying failed to generate diffs, we can now use this as an error. Okay, and this is shit. So whoever said, shouldn't you implement error? I'm now on your side. I'm now on your side because here we could do something like, um, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? I want to get like a, like a little like backtrace of errors. Do I, what do I want to show the fucking user here? Like, what do I want? What do I want? Fail to generate diff. Like, you could have, like, caused by, caused by. Um, but is that what I want? Also, fail to generate diff, fail to generate diffs is such a funny...
That's like just a funny thing to say. Um. No, I think it's fine. I think it's fine, actually. What we'll do here is, um, we're just gonna render the error directly. Like this. And then that looks kind of okay. Do it Java style or .NET style. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fine. Fail to generate this, al algorithm required this many bytes, which is over the maximum of this many bytes. How many bytes is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 250 megs. <laughs> Dude, that's so many. Uh, Yeah, that's fine, I think. It's not the end of the world. And then we just have to set, like, a sane maximum. So... You should do a quick little util function for kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how much I care, right? If I think this is going to happen infrequently enough that it doesn't fucking matter. Like, if this is, like, a real edge case, then maybe I don't care enough. Should is always strong. <laughs> like, I should if something. And I don't know if I care. Because really, like, the only thing that I'm really trying to accomplish here is, uh... Stopping my thing from fucking crashing or like ooming in uh, degenerate cases. Like in reality, uh, I don't expect this problem to stay around for very long, um, because really using this like quadratic version of the algorithm is like fucking stupid. There is a linear version that we can implement, um, and so probably what th this is going to turn into is um, here I'll, I'll fucking draw it up. So. The way, like, the linear version works is, like, you have, like, this, like, search space, right? Where you have, like, deletions are flagged as moves along the x-axis and additions are flagged as insertions or moves along the y-axis. And if I understand the linear version correctly, what they basically do... Uh, how do I say this? So the, the memory usage for traversing this guy is essentially, like, this diagonal. Right? We kind of drew out this, like, triangle of memory usage earlier, where uh, in order to, like, track the, the insertions and deletions, you say for each step of the algorithm, I'm going to, I need to allocate one more row of this triangle. Um, but if, if you don't care about actually generating the diff, and you're just trying to, like, bisect this problem into two smaller problems, you actually only need to generate one row of data, and you can use that over and over again. So what you can do is you can say, like, I'm going to, like, traverse this way, and I'm going to traverse, like, forwards and backwards at the same time, and at some point, like, these two traversals are going to sl slam into each other. And so you can kind of, like, take this thing that would have to generate this, like, massive tree of memory, and then split it in half so you only have to generate two smaller trees of memory, and if those are still too big, then you can do the fucking same thing again and start from, like, wherever these two guys intersect, you can draw, like, a new box, like this, two smaller boxes, and you do the same thing. You, like, traverse backwards and forwards until these guys slam into each other, and then, again, you just have, like, these, like, smaller and smaller boxes. And so you can kind of, like, piecewise turn this uh, O n squared thing into a bunch of like smaller o n squared things and if you took this all the way to the very end it becomes linear because like you just keep bisecting 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 until it's like you only have to traverse once and so where i think this is actually going to end up going is i'm going to do this bisection until the memory usage is uh low enough Right, because the reason the, the problem with this approach of bisecting is it forces your diff to go through like one singular point, which may still be optimal, like a uh, minimal, like it's still like the minimum number of edits, but not necessarily in the right order. Right, you might have like several points along this line that match, uh, and to pick the one that you want most, you kind of need to know the context of everything else. Um, so you have to make a decision, and so like this decision has to be made kind of blind if I understand whatever correctly. I'm not really sure, I only read this yesterday. Um, and I only like kind of half get it. So, um, in my mind, probably, the quadratic version results in better diffs, but at the expense of memory usage. So, the end the end goal here is going to be, I'm going to bisect into as few as, or yeah, as few quadratic sections as possible, while staying under the memory limit. 
And so all of that to say, um, I don't care that much about this intermediate stage. That's kind of what, like, it will fail in some ways, and the error messages can be shit, but as long as it doesn't, like, fucking crash, then it's, like, fine. Because I do not expect it to stay this way for long. So, where the fuck were we? Where were we? Um, I guess somewhere we need to set a sane value for max memory. So when we construct this guy, when we construct this guy, he needs to get the maximum from somewhere. So this is a thread that runs processing on the diffs in response to some GUI actions. I wonder if maybe setting the maximum in UI makes sense. Because that can stay around, right? If we set some maximum amount of memory usage. If what I just said is true, kind of like the maximum that you're allowing will affect the quality of the diff. And so maybe presenting that to the user isn't so awful. It's not so awful. So here we could say like pub max memory usage is a use size max memory bytes which is going to be kind of like a misnomer but that's fine and we'll set like some default of like uh like what is this what one megabyte so we'll say like uh 100 times this so i guess we can say something like const uh bytes to k bytes is equal to 10.4 and then you say kb to mb, or I guess we can say even bytes to megabytes is just 24 times 24. I think that's understandable enough. Uh, I guess it's actually mb to b. mb to b. Yeah, that seems clear to me. 100 megabytes. Same default. And... Actually, maybe we'll even in here, maybe we'll make this guy's unit uh, megabytes. I think that's a sane, uh, sane unit for people in the world to think about. And then we can convert that to bytes when we, when, like, down the road. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So then when we, who, like, edits these other things in the widget we in the header bar construct a bunch of stuff okay here we go and we can just say uh one of the many things that we are allowed to do is uh do like a ui drag is it egui drag value new and this is going to be associated with options dot what do we call it max memory megabytes and we put that in the ui which has some api for that hi brother no long time no see welcome back welcome back long time no see um how do i fucking draw stuff egui 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 drag value uh, egui docs rs okay Drag value. Is it long time no see? Because I keep flashbanging you and you're just like, fuck this, I'm gone. Because as soon as you're back, we're doing it again. Um, oh, I think it's maybe UI.show is what it is. It's UI show like this, I think. Am I high? UI add, 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 add. Am I rewriting Git UI? I wouldn't call it a rewrite. I'm writing a Git GUI for myself. Rewrite is strong, I think. Uh, okay, so what does that look like? What does that look like? There should be a drag value in here, but he'll, he'll have no label. He's just going to be like, this is just a number. And I don't like where he is, probably. I probably want this to be like off on the right side. 
So I guess we could put this all the way at the end. And let's see. We probably need a label associated with them, I guess. Or can the drag value have a label? Can I like... Mm. No, I guess not. So we'll just shove our own label on there. And I guess the convention is that we go, the label goes after on the right. You have the drag value above, you can just copy next time. Oh, did I? <laughs> I sure did. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, and this is going to be uh, max memory megabytes. Max diff, yeah, max mem megabytes. And I guess this is like a kind of misnomer to some extent. Right? People are going to think that that means the maximum memory that the application is allowed to use, which is just not true. It's the maximum memory that a diff is allowed to use, but it's effectively the same, assuming that your files aren't, like, fucking massive. Um, is this supposed to be lowercase b? No, uppercase b. Mega is capital, bytes is capital, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and so then I have to do something on that. So if this thing happens... And what do we do on this drag value here? If it changed. I guess we do the same thing where we request a process. Uh-huh. Makes sense so far. And I guess that means that uh, now the diff processor doesn't store the max memory bytes himself uh but it's just like one of the many options that he looks at so here we're gonna look at self options dot max memory max i guess we'll say somewhere let max mem bytes is equal to self options max memory mb times 1024 times 1024 and we abstract that away so we say const B, uh, mb to b is a u size of equal to 1024 times 1024. And here we can say mb to b. Nice, nice. All right. And then here, everywhere we're using self max memory bytes just comes max mem bytes. Uh, fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, vfs change max mem bytes there we go all right chilling okay so now what we should see is if i uh open this guy and i slide that slider really far down ah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. nice nice look at that look at that so we're seeing that fail to generate diffs and he's telling us how much oh that's so that's actually kind of slick that's kind of slick. I'm okay with that. That's not awful. Because I think it's reasonable to not assume a certain size. It's crazy that we need 250 megabytes of RAM to generate this diff. But that we'll solve that later. We'll solve that later. For now, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm I'm definitely okay with that. Definitely okay with that. Uh, did we did we leave anything undone? I guess it's. <laughs> I should be using. My diff tool instead of get diff. That's the whole fucking point. Uh, okay. Over memory limit error. Who says this? Yeah, that's fine. We have a new over memory limit error. Who is. Comes out of diff, error stuff. This gets propagated when we split insertions and removals because we re-diff. Uh, but this is probably honestly never going to happen. This is almost certainly just impossible to hit, but that's okay. We propagate some max memory bytes here. Great. 
Uh, let's do this way. Here we go. Uh, so here we have 100 that's stuck here. So that's actually no longer necessary. So here when we take in max memory bytes, this is no longer needed, which means that in spiff rs, we don't need to pass in that 100. And in spiff gui, we also don't need to pass in that 100. Okay. Over memory limit, max memory memory megabytes is added to our options. We have this new failed flag that we use when we press the diffs. Ah, right. This is what we left undone. So, uh, I wanted... I wanted this... Where is it? This zero here that's shown to be replaced with, like, question marks or something. Because, like, when this comes up in, uh... When this comes up in like a normal diff, uh, we're gonna see like here, this is like 390 lines changed, and the, they were all additions. Where like this is like 148 lines changed, and like they were mostly additions. It would be nice to be like the the instead of it showing zero, it should be like I don't fucking know, right? It's like because otherwise it looks like this thing is showing up as uh as like nothing changed, but I'm showing it anyways, versus like, no, 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 something changed, it's fucked up. We don't understand it. But I guess maybe we checkpoint now. Oopsies. Get add dash u, get commit dash m checkpoint. And so what does that entail? What does that entail? And I guess we kind of did all this. And we're kind of at a uh, flag failure at overview. I know what we're looking at now. So let's see. I guess, I guess in our widget, no process diff data here. This stuff is all kind of only available if it was like successful. So what we can do is, uh, maybe we'll say we'll kind of like put that all in like a bundle. What do you think, guys? Is it okay to start an engineer career if you're 25 years old? Uh, I don't. I, I don't see any reason why not. Right? You're only what a few years behind. Say you went to like engineering right out of out, out of high school. Right? You would have been like 19. So five, six years, dude. Five, six years is like the time it takes to go from like like junior developer to senior developer in like this like stupid fucked up. <laughs> world of software engineering <laughs> right like it's so stupid that you 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 work for like such a short period of time and they're like well that's the max level that you could hit it's like it's insane but like that is kind of what i at least what i've witnessed at like the couple companies i've worked at so like i don't see you you're still going to be in an okay spot. It's like, I mean, there's, there's lots of risks to consider, right? If you're 25, you do your engineering degree, you're 29 when you're done, you're then like, you have like another like cup, you know, you make like pretty decent money if you're frugal up front, depending on your student loans. Like, you know, there's a lot to consider, but I don't see any reason why like starting at 30, you'll be, you wouldn't be fine. Assuming that you have like the buffer to like the financial buffer to go to school again. But what do I know? Nothing. Don't take my advice. I'm just some guy. I don't know if I fucking know anything. I don't know shit. Um, okay, so we're gonna call... Here, all of these things are related to some concept of, like... Uh, some concept of... What is the concept? The concept is, like, overview data, I guess? Not really. This is also overview data. Um, so there's, well, I know there's two states. One is unknown and one is known. So maybe we just call this like, uh, enum insertion, ins, ins, uh, insertion data, uh, overview, insertion, change overview. I kind of like that. How did this file change? And it's going to have two states, known, in which case it's going to have this stuff. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's the unknown state. 
And then here, we're just going to say we have a change overview. And this unknown has nothing. And this is going to be a change overview. Yes. Okay. So now, that's going to cause all sorts of problems. Oh, but I can't see them easily in this view because all of our tests are broken, so I'm just going to cargo check. Uh, so this is all in lib rs. Okay. Here we go. So it's all here. So we're going to say uh, let change overview is equal to change overview unknown. So that's just change overview here. Simple. And then in the other path, in the other path, we do the same thing. So change overview is equal to change is just like this. And we say let change overview is equal to change overview known with this stuff. Uh-huh. Okay. Which should cover a lot of the failures. So now on the widget side, when we try to render these guys, we're going to have to look at um, if it's known or unknown. Uh, so what is going on here? Um, I guess we pull this stuff out. Maybe this is, uh, maybe not. Uh, Let's do it the stupid way for now, and I can refine later if I want to. So we're going to say match diff change overview. And if it's a change overview known, and we have num inserted lines, num removed lines, num moved insertions, and num moved removals. We can just do exactly whatever the fuck we were doing before. Which is this. Uh-huh. Uh, but all of these things that say diff dot just nuke those guys. Fuck them. Uh, then we have to say create change overview unknown. And in this case, we're going to append some label of uh, what it's going to be. He takes in a string, so just be like, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And color 32 light red. It's probably reasonable. Probably reasonable. And then here, why does it think that over memory limit doesn't, doesn't implement display? It did like a second ago. Did I fucking remove it by mistake? Over memory limit error. Like, what the fuck? We implemented a display for this already. I saw it. I did it with my eyes. It's right here. So what's it complaining about? Oh, I don't know. Looks like it's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's nice. That's a lot better. Look at that. Look at that. And maybe this, like, this whole thing should be read in that case. That doesn't seem... Crazy. So it's almost like we want to do this. Show the label like this. Oops. And in the case where we fail, we show the same label. Uh, in light red. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's no reason that this has to be multiple things. It should be format. Uh, label like this. Label. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's take a look. little look, skis. How's that look? Yeah, that's not bad. That's very nice, I think. So... Now we can actually do like something like get uh, cargo run. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, get big. 
diff tool dash d and here i just change my diff tool from sif gui to uh dot slash target debugs diff gui maybe <laughs> and then cargo build and uh get dt at yeah, yeah yeah nice 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 so now i can like reduce the memory until this doesn't work anymore oh that's so nice look at that that's not bad at all. And that's like super fucking clear. Super clear. Isn't the move tracking supposed to get disabled if any file breaks? I thought that that was what was supposed to happen. It doesn't seem like that's what we ended up doing. So where is that? Where is that? That's in here. So we say if all diffs are okay, we do this. Otherwise, we do ah. We are supposed to flag an error. Oh no, okay. So all diffs generated. So in the case where all diffs were not generated, we don't give up. We only give up if we fail to generate matches. I see, I see. Which maybe is not correct. Maybe we should fail. We should we should say, if all of our diffs were not generated, then we can't do diff matching. Uh, but I don't care enough right now to deal with that. Uh, I think... I'm probably okay with this for now. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that feels pretty good. And I think nothing else here is, like, super interesting... Um, I was thinking that if we got through everything, like, really fast, then we would look at trying to reduce the number of failure cases. Like, basically try to, like, dynamically allocate a little bit more. Like, not allocate the whole thing up front, but maybe, like, segment it. But I don't think that, like, we're at 1 hour 40, which means that I'd have to do that in, like, 20 minutes, which I don't really want to attempt. I think it's possible, but, like, not worth it. There's, like, integration with spit, not spiff. Um, but I think that, like, the way we implement this, it just comes for free. I think all I have to do is update the spiff dependency. Which, you know, we, we might as well do that. We might as well do that just to prove it. So in here, we can look at cargo toml, and here we can say that we look at a path of spiff. Spiff, like this. And so now if I cargo run this, I think we should see the same behavior in the git GUI. I think. Hopefully. Hopefully we did it right. Uh, I have to use it on this specific directory. Uh, we are getting an invalid match. Oh, that's interesting. Lib RS four eighty two. Ah, okay. So we do have to. We probably do have to do this. We have to say um, if all diffs generated. If we didn't have. Oh no! Hold on. All diffs generated? We should only try to do this if all the diffs generated. So what's the invalid match from? If there is a removal that does not have an associated move in matches. So uh, I don't understand. That shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. Bug. Bug, 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 bug. Fuck, that was supposed to be like one real quick. Look, it works. Uh, but it does look like that's not the case. It looks like, oh, this is working. So here, come down. So which one of these guys was triggering that? This is fine. It's here, add support for viewing the index. Index is out of bounds. The length is 33, but the index is 48. 480 and spiff. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, fuck me. I made a big mistake here. So, uh, that explains a lot why this guy used to take in, uh, all diffs. 
that explains it. We just deleted that for like blindly, which was fucking stupid. Uh, and we shouldn't have done that. Because he needs to do that in order to show where the diff came from. Like, if, if I'm moving things between files, he needs to say, like, oh, this hunk goes over there. Um, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. That explains a lot. Explains a lot. So... Okay. Uh, we need to undo that change. We need to undo that change. So we're going to say uh, 0140 bug fixing. Whoopsies. Good thing that we tried that or else we would have really, we would have merged some shit code. It is shit. Okay. Uh, so how do we do this? Uh, go back to spiff. Get log, we diff with this. And we just look for whatever the fuck. Uh, what file were we in? We were in lib rs. Okay. So it was this. This is what it used to be. Diffs was this. Uh, so is this one. Okay, and so we have to figure out how to uh, adjust this type so that it doesn't suck ass. Um, uh, okay, so somewhere we construct the single diff processor inputs. And we need to... I think we do need to adjust this type to be... Uh, Results. I think we'll do it that way. So this is a slice of result, this, and uh, its failure type is diff generation error. And this has to get to shown over here. And now when we look at this guy, just everywhere we look at this, Um, maybe we flatten this thing so this only happens on OKs. Okay, this thing has reference diff action, mismatch types, expected diff action. So what the fuck is going on there? No, oh, what a pain, what a pain, what a pain, what a pain. What is it even complaining about? What is it even complaining about? Cargo check. Um, expected this. Oh, I see. So at the end, it's because we are returning vec diff actions at line spiff lib 240. Oh, okay. So this guy is uh, diffs is self diffs like this. Okay. Oh, and then we probably have to add in all of the places where we uh, look at. Uh, fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, this doesn't work out the way I thought it did. It does not work the way I thought it did. So here we actually need um diffs diff self diff idx like this. I think. Process traversals. This is show star child. What the? Oh, we need to look back at what we changed. So this guy, this is right. This guy needs to be the same thing. Down here, we need let line IDX. This guy needs to use the diff IDX. And this was diff IDX, not self diff IDX, which is like the important distinction. And here, um, there is this can now fail. So for now, we'll put unwrap here, uh, but we'll have to say fix me, do not unwrap. This is the important case. And then down here, we have the same thing. Um, diff idx unwrap. 
fix me. Do not unwrap. Okay. So this is only for matching with uh, other ones. Okay, so for now, if we try to run a diff, we should see... Oh, fuck off. Okay, line 352. Uh, map x... Uh, X, X dot land unwrap or one or something. I don't know. Uh, this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't happen. My high self diff diff IDX. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So here I'm already enumerating this guy. So this is IDX is equal to. Show end? What was this doing before? What the fuck is this? So we're looking at... We're looking over our iter... Oh, I see. So we're saying, are we, like, the last one? I see. Are we the last element in our thing? So... Uh... Right. So I think that's fine. I think that's fine they're getting mad at like moves now so we can say uh as ref i guess uh-huh cargo check and now there's a bunch of things they're complaining about moves so we have to fix all these this is like uh as ref here and as ref here are we chilling we're chilling okay so now when we run this we should see that the diffs generate okay um, if we increase memory a little bit. Okay, so that's chilling. And so now we just have to handle the failure case of, um, uh, unable to find the move destination. Uh, so here we're saying like, hey, if we get a match, I guess technically this should never happen. Uh, we could, should say, should not resolve match with invalid diff. That should, that's, like, impossible. Because we wouldn't have been able to generate a match if the diff didn't exist. So I think that we don't even have to do anything clever here. We can just say expect. Should not resolve match with invalid diff. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Now we are back. And now we can go back into spit... And that failure should go away. Where we were seeing crashes because of whatever the fuck we were seeing before. I don't even remember what it was. But I think that now we should be able to click on whichever this guy. I think he was crashing before. And now he's not. Okay. Okay. Not bad, I think. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. I think that's good enough. Probably good enough. Nice, nice. So now this guy's saying, like, you need way more memory for this. And he'll even tell me, I need this many. And so... <laughs> it's funny to see it lag behind. That's funny. Because I guess the GUI is not responsive. Like, he's, like, queuing up requests on the processor thread, and they can't keep up. That's funny. I've, I haven't seen that before. That's really funny. A side effect of um, the GUI being a different thread than the actual work. Um, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty fucking good. I think I'm really actually... I think uh, that is going to be good enough to like unlock me using this a lot. Because uh, that was causing some major slowdowns. Pretty sick. All right. Going to call it there. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, I stream most days at around 1 or 2 o'clock Pacific time for 1 and 2 hours, so I'm online, so, you know, between 1 and 4-ish, right? Uh, right now we're working on this Git GUI. We're also working on a terminal emulator. I'll probably jump back onto the terminal em emulator somewhat soon. That's the plan. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how I feel in the next few days. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if there's much more to do on the Git GUI. I guess uh, I do want to be able to add like stage and unstage files from the GUI. So 
there's going to be that. And then maybe a little bit of like rebasing stuff. I want to be able to do like a nice little interactive rebase with the UI probably. But then after that, we should be back on Termi. Um, we're doing like variety of stuff basically. So like whatever I'm interested in implementing is what ends up on the channel. So uh, if you check out the YouTube link in the Twitch description, uh, there should be playlists for all of our projects as well as a GitHub link um, with the source code for those projects. Um, if you're struggling with... Uh, like some people don't see the links in the Twitch description. I'm not really sure why I have to fix that. But for now, if you're there, it's the same username on both GitHub and YouTube. Um, if you're on YouTube, there should be a Twitch link in the YouTube description. And if you're online between one and four and you feel like saying hi, feel free to swing by. So come, you know, click the link, come say hi. Be kind of nice. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.